The Athorian king Zorgax gasped in disbelief as his trusted commander's hologram flickered before him. Human ships are supposed to be primitive. Commander Talon's mandibles clicked nervously. My lord, the human vessel. It outmaneuvered us. Unleashed weapons we've never seen. The hammer of Ithar is crippled. Zorgax clenched his fists, his shock transforming into cold rage. For centuries, the mighty Athorian Empire had viewed humans as a backwater species, technologically and culturally inferior. But now, a lone human ship, this Odyssey, had shattered that illusion, laying waste to one of the Athorian fleet's most formidable battleships. I want that ship, Talon, Zorgax hissed. I want its secrets, its technology. Bring me the crew alive, if possible. His eyes narrowed. All ships to battle stations. The humans will learn the price of defying the Athorian Empire. Light years away, Captain Dylan Rice stood on the bridge of the HSS Odyssey, his brow furrowed as he studied the readouts from their recent clash with the alien vessel. The Odyssey, pride of Earth's exploratory fleet, had held its own thanks to the revolutionary fusion drive powering its impressive speed and agility. But Rice knew their victory had come at a cost. They were deep in uncharted space, far from reinforcements, and had just kicked the hornet's nest of a very powerful, very angry alien empire. Klaxons blared and crimson light bathed the bridge. Rice's XO, Commander Jenna Novak, looked up grimly from her console. Multiple warp signatures detected, Captain. The Athorians are coming, and they're out for blood. Captain Rice returned her gaze steadily, a glint of defiant determination in his eyes. Then let's show them what humanity is made of. The Odyssey shuddered as a barrage of Athorian plasma blasts slammed into its shields. On the bridge, Captain Rice squeezed the armrests of his command chair, his squeezing hard. Evasive maneuvers, pattern Delta Five, he barked. Keep those ships off our tail. The human vessel banked hard, narrowly avoiding another salvo. Its fusion drive flared, propelling it forward in a burst of speed that left the pursuing Athorian ship struggling to keep up. In the Odyssey's CIC, Commander Novak studied the tactical display, her brow furrowed in concentration. Their weapons are powerful, but their targeting systems can't track us at this velocity. If we keep up this pace, we might be able to wear them down. Rice nodded grimly. We'll hit them hard and fast, then jump out before they can regroup. Prep the EMP missiles and stand by for my order. As the Odyssey danced through the void, engaging in a deadly game of cat and mouse with the Athorian fleet, Princess Arya sat in her private chambers aboard the Athorian flagship, her eyes locked on the data pad before her. She had sliced into the fleet's communications network, monitoring every transmission, every scrap of data related to the humans and their ship. What she found surprised her. The humans were not the primitive, barbaric species she had been led to believe. Their technology was advanced, their tactics clever and inventive. They adapted to challenges with a swiftness that belied the Athorians' long-held assumptions about their inferiority. Arya leaned back in her chair, a pensive expression on her face. Perhaps her father's aggressive stance toward the humans was misguided. If they could establish peaceful contact, learn from one another. Her musings were interrupted by a sudden violent shudder that rocked the ship. Alarms blared, and the acrid scent of burning circuitry filled the air. On the bridge, Admiral Dravox snarled as damage reports flooded in. The human ship is targeting our critical systems. Divert all power to shields and weapons. But it was too late. The Odyssey's EMP missiles slammed into the Athorian fleet, disabling several vessels and leaving them drifting helplessly. With a triumphant roar of its engines, the human ship leapt to FTL, vanishing into the void. King Zorgax's hologram appeared on the bridge, his face contorted with rage. I want that ship found, Admiral. Repair our vessels. Reinforce the fleet. We will scour every star system, every cosmic anomaly, until we capture the Odyssey and its crew. They will pay for this insult to the Athorian Empire. Light years away, the Odyssey emerged from FTL in a remote, uncharted star system. Captain Rice leaned forward in his chair, studying the readouts on the main view screen. What have we got, Novak? The XO brought up a series of images and sensor readings. A terrestrial planet, sir, 
Looks like it's in the early stages of terraforming. The atmosphere is still thin, and the surface is pretty harsh. But it might just be enough to mask our presence from any Athorian ships that come searching. Rice nodded. Take us in, then. We'll make repairs and resupply, give the crew a chance to catch their breath. He stood, his gaze fixed on the slowly revolving planet before them. But stay sharp. We're in uncharted territory, and there's no telling what we might find down there. As the Odyssey descended through the planet's wispy atmosphere, the crew prepared for the challenges ahead, unaware that the greatest dangers might lie not in the stars above, but in the secrets waiting to be uncovered on the surface below. The Odyssey's landing struts groaned as they touched down on Novus's rocky surface. Plumes of reddish dust billowed around the ship, obscuring the harsh landscape beyond. Captain Rice stood at the airlock, adjusting his environment suit. Remember, people, this atmosphere is still toxic. No one removes their helmets until we've run a full analysis. Commander Novak nodded, her face barely visible behind her visor. Understood, sir. I've got repair teams ready to assess the damage. As they stepped onto the planet's surface, the crew was struck by the alien beauty of Novus. Jagged mountains loomed in the distance, their peaks shrouded in swirling clouds. The ground beneath their feet trembled periodically, a reminder of the planet's ongoing transformation. Jackson, what's our status? Rice called over the comm. The chief engineer's voice crackled back. Not great, Captain. The EMP countermeasures fried some of our systems. We're looking at least a week of repairs, maybe more. Rice frowned. We don't have a week. Get creative. As the crew set to work, Dr. Alara Chen, the Odyssey's xenobiologist, approached the captain. Sir, I'm picking up some unusual readings. There might be more to this planet than we thought. Before Rice could respond, a loud rumble echoed across the landscape. The ground shook violently, sending several crew members stumbling. As the dust settled, a massive fissure had opened up nearby, revealing a glimpse of metal and stone beneath the planet's surface. What the hell? Novak muttered adjusting her scanner. Captain, I'm detecting an energy signature from that opening. It's... it's not natural. Rice's order to investigate was cut short by a shout from one of the security officers. Movement! 30 degrees to our left! The crew turned, weapons raised, as a group of figures emerged from behind a nearby rock formation. They wore environment suits similar to the humans, but their alien physiology was unmistakable. Ithorians! Rice breathed, his hand hovering over his sidearm. One of the Athorians stepped forward, hands raised in a gesture of peace. When she spoke, her voice was translated through their suit's comm systems. I am Dr. Zara. We mean you no harm. I believe we have much to discuss, Captain. Rice, he replied cautiously. Dylan Rice of the HSS Odyssey. Care to explain what you're doing on this supposedly uninhabited planet? Zara's compound eyes blinked rapidly. The same thing you are, I suspect. Seeking shelter and answers. Perhaps we can help each other. As Rice considered her words, a priority alert flashed across his helmet's HUD. Incoming transmission, unknown source, Novak reported, her voice tense. When Rice accepted the transmission, a holographic face materialized before him, unmistakably a Thorian, but with a regal bearing that set her apart. Captain Rice, the figure said, her voice low and urgent. I am Princess Arya of the Athorian Empire. We have little time. My father's forces are mobilizing, and I fear for both our peoples. If you're willing to listen, I have information that could change everything. Rice glanced from the princess's hologram to Dr. Zara and her team, then back to the exposed ruins in the fissure. In that moment, he realized that their mission— and perhaps the future of human Athorian relations, had just become far more complex than he could have imagined. All right, he said, addressing both Arya and Zara. Let's talk. The ruins beneath Novus's surface hummed with activity as human and Athorian scientists worked side by side, their earlier mistrust replaced by a shared sense of urgency. Captain Rice stood at the heart of the excavation, watching as Commander Jackson and Dr. Zara huddled over a glowing console. We're close, Jackson muttered, his fingers dancing across the alien interface. The power signatures are unlike anything I've ever seen. 
Dr. Zara's compound eyes blinked rapidly as she processed the data. The energy output is orders of magnitude beyond our current technology. If we can harness this... Their words were cut short by a priority alert blaring through Rice's comms. Princess Arya's hologram materialized, her expression grim. Captain, our long-range sensors have detected a massive fleet approaching. My father leads them personally aboard the Imperator. Rice's teeth clenched. How long? Hours at most. You must evacuate immediately. The captain surveyed the bustle of activity around him, the half-assembled prototype of the ancient weapon looming in the chamber's center. Negative. We're too close to give up now. This might be our only chance. As if in response to his words, the prototype surged to life, bathing the chamber in an eerie blue glow. Jackson's whoop of triumph echoed through the cavern. We've done it, he shouted. Full power initialization in three, two, one. A beam of pure energy lanced out, slicing through the cavern's far wall and continuing upward. On the Odyssey's bridge, Novak's eyes widened as she watched the beam effortlessly pierce their shields, dissipating harmlessly just short of the hull. My God, she whispered. If they'd fired that at full power... The celebration below was short-lived. The ground shook violently as the first salvos from the Imperator's fleet slammed into Novus's surface. Rice's calm crackled to life. King Zorgax's voice filled with cold fury. Surrender now, humans, or be obliterated. You have one planetary rotation to comply. Rice exchanged glances with Arya and Dr. Zara. Your Majesty, he replied, his voice steady. Perhaps we should discuss terms. We've made a discovery here that changes everything. A tense silence followed. Finally, Zorgak spoke again. Explain. We've uncovered an ancient weapon of immense power. But more importantly, we found proof that humans once controlled a vast galactic empire. This planet, this technology, it's all part of our forgotten heritage. The silence stretched longer this time. When Zorgax responded, his voice betrayed a hint of uncertainty. If what you say is true, Captain, then we have much to discuss. I will meet with you personally. As preparations for the meeting began, a series of explosions rocked the ruins. Alarms blared as Rice sprinted towards the weapon chamber. He arrived to find chaos. A group of Ithorian extremists had breached the perimeter, their weapons trained on the prototype. For the purity of the Empire, one of them shouted, priming a plasma grenade. Rice dove for cover as the device detonated. When the dust settled, he saw the prototype's power core pulsing erratically, cracks spreading across its surface. In the aftermath of the attack, with both sides licking their wounds, Rice found himself face to face with King Zorgax. The Athorian monarch's eyes narrowed as he surveyed the damaged prototype. It seems we find ourselves at an impasse, Captain, Zorgax rumbled. Neither of us can claim victory here. Rice nodded slowly. Perhaps that's for the best. We've seen what unchecked aggression and misunderstanding can lead to. Maybe it's time for a different approach. As human and Athorian leaders began tentative discussions, Rice couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The loss of the weapon and the simmering resentments on both sides cast a long shadow over their newfound alliance. Yet as he watched his crew working alongside their former enemies, he allowed himself a glimmer of hope for the future. The negotiations between Captain Rice and King Zorgax stretched on for days, each side probing for weaknesses while maintaining a facade of cooperation. They met in a hastily constructed prefab structure on Novus's surface, neutral ground for both parties. We must consider the long-term implications, Princess Arya said, her hologram flickering slightly. Our civilizations have more to gain through alliance than continued hostility. Rice nodded, studying the faces around him. King Zorgax's expression remained inscrutable, while Admiral Dravox's eyes narrowed with barely concealed contempt. The princess speaks wisely, Rice said. We've seen what our combined efforts can achieve. Imagine what we could accomplish with genuine cooperation. Dravox slammed a clawed hand on the table. You speak of cooperation, human, while your kind holds the power to obliterate us all. A power we chose not to use, Rice countered despite your unprovoked attacks. Before Dravox could retort, Dr. Zara burst into the room, 
her compound eyes wide with excitement and fear. Your Majesty, Captain, we've made a discovery. You need to see this immediately. They followed her to the excavation site, where Commander Jackson stood before a holographic display, his face ashen. We've decrypted more of the ancient data banks, he explained. What we found, it changes everything. The display flickered to life, showing a recording of Ithorian ships unleashing devastation upon human worlds. Cities crumbled, continents burned, and billions perished in an apocalyptic assault. No, King Zorgax whispered, this cannot be. I'm afraid it is, Your Majesty, Dr. Zara said. Our ancestors weren't content with defeating the human empire. They sought to erase it entirely from history. The revelation hung in the air like a poisonous cloud. Rice's hand instinctively moved to his sidearm, while Dravox's expression morphed from shock to grim satisfaction. Before anyone could react, alarms blared throughout the complex. Novak's voice crackled over the comms. Captain, we're under attack! Ithorian ships have opened fire on the Odyssey and the excavation site! Chaos erupted as Dravox and his loyalists sprang into action, weapons drawn. For the purity of the Empire! The Admiral roared, firing at Rice. The captain dove for cover, returning fire as King Zorgax and Princess Arya's guards formed a protective circle around them. Dr. Zara and Jackson scrambled to secure the ancient databanks. We need to get to the Odyssey, Rice shouted over the din of battle. It's our only chance. They fought their way through the complex, human, and Ithorian allies, working in tandem against Dravox's forces. Outside, the sky burned with weapons fire as the Imperator loomed overhead, its massive cannons trained on the Odyssey. Rice's mind raced as he assessed their options. The ancient weapon was their only hope, but using it could destroy everything they'd fought to protect. Jackson, he called, can we redirect the weapon's energy pulse? The engineer's eyes widened as he grasped Rice's plan. Maybe, but it'll take time we don't have. Princess Aria stepped forward, her hologram flickering more intensely now. I can buy you that time, Captain. My physical form is aboard the Imperator. I can sabotage their systems from within. Arya, no, King Zorgax protested. It's too dangerous. The princess's image smiled sadly. It's the only way, father, for both our peoples. As Arya's hologram vanished, Rice turned to his crew and their Ithorian allies. Let's make her sacrifice count. We've got work to do. They raced against time, reconfiguring the ancient power source as Dravox's forces closed in. Above them, the Imperator's weapons charged for a killing blow. Suddenly, the massive ship's engines sputtered and died. Escape pods jettisoned from its hull as systems failed across the board. Now, Jackson, Rice ordered. The engineer activated the power source, channeling its energy into a focused pulse. The beam lanced upward, striking the Imperator with surgical precision. The ship's hull buckled and shattered, raining debris across Novus's surface. As the dust settled, Rice surveyed the aftermath. The Odyssey lay in ruins, and the excavation site was little more than a smoking crater. Ithorian and human survivors huddled together, shell-shocked but alive. King Zorgax approached, his regal bearing diminished by grief. My daughter, she saved us all. Rice nodded solemnly. She believed in a future where our people could coexist. We owe it to her memory to see that dream realized. As they began coordinating rescue efforts, Dr. Zara approached with a data pad. Captain, Your Majesty, I've analyzed the weapon's energy signature. The pulse has rendered Novus uninhabitable. We need to evacuate immediately. Rice's gaze swept over his battered crew and their newfound allies. We'll use the remaining Athorian shuttles. It's time to find a new home. Together. As they prepared for departure, Rice couldn't shake the weight of all they'd lost and all that lay ahead. The journey to rebuild would be long and fraught with challenges. But as he watched humans and Athorians working side by side, he allowed himself a glimmer of hope for the future they would forge among the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.